Right, this week we're going to make a drag chain for these floppy cables with the laser cutter. Okay, so before we get going, I'm going to point out that I've divided this video up into chapters so that you don't have to watch the bits that you're not interested in. Um, there's going to be one where I do drawing manipulation and how to set up one that fit your size and then there's going to be a chapter on how to assemble my drawings and then there's going to be a chapter on how I installed the drag chain on my CNC router. So I hope you enjoy the video and if you've got any questions please drop them down in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. If you found this video or any of my other content interesting please consider subscribing that way you'll get to find out if there's more interesting things to look at okay so I've pulled up this design I found online on inventables and I've linked it below in the description if you're interested in this um, it didn't quite fit what I needed so I'm going to alter it and first of all I'm going to alter this one section of it um, I needed to fit four cables in that are 15 millimeters diameter this design currently only allows for one 10 millimeter diameter cable and even then it's probably running lots of little ones that can bend a lot more because it's so short so we're going to make it slightly taller so that the gap between the two notches is 15 millimeters and then we'll make it slightly longer as well to accommodate for the greater bending radius of the cable so i'm using inkscape and i've drawn a 15 millimeter line which I'm going to use as my guide and then I'm going to select the top half of this diagram and just drag it until the correct point snaps to the top of that line. The next thing you need to consider is that the material thickness that you're going to be cutting with your laser cutter matches this notches so that they, they can actually slide together. Um, the original drawing I took my dimensions from was meant for 2mm ply whereas I was using 3.8 and so I changed it um, to 3.8 and then found it was a loose fit so you need to take away the thickness of your laser beam so I ended up making my notches 3.2mm for my 3.8mm ply So I'm now drawing the top plate of the assembly and I'm using the same method as I did with the, the sides and I've got a short line to measure the thickness of the ply for the notches and a long line to measure the distance between the notches and I'm just going to copy and paste it to the required number of cables that I've got to carry which is four in this case. So I copy and paste three of them and just delete one of the notches and that sorts out what I need. Then all I need to do is copy and paste the other side and flip it so that I have two, one for each side. Okay the last piece of the puzzle is the bottom plate and it needs to have its notches made to the correct width. It in itself needs to be the correct width as well between the outer notches like this and then it needs to be the right depth so it's the same as the top plate and then it needs to have additional notches added into it so that all the little dividers we're going to make for the to keep the cables separate and in line uh, they will go into these middle notches so the actual last piece of the puzzle are these little dividing panels and I'm going to leave these up to you guys to design for yourselves because if you've watched me drawing this much you will hopefully already know how to do the drawing. Okay so the last part of this is trying to make an arrangement on your canvas that fits your laser cutter as best possible and I found I could get five of these into my canvas which was a 30 by 20 centimeter board However, when it comes to actually printing it out, it turns out my laser's not properly aligned and the very bottom right hand corner where I rarely cut 
doesn't cut all the way through like it does everywhere else. So there's a bit of tweaking there for me to do. I will provide the four unit board as well as this five unit board available down in the links below. So after turning the drawing to red to indicate that it needs to be cut, I stuck it in the laser cutter and printed out a whole load of parts. In retrospect, I probably should have only cut out two uh, because this didn't actually work to how I wanted it. it. So this is how I assembled the first prototype. I put the three tabs in first and then I put the lid on and then I slid the, the actual sides on last. I then made the second one and joined them together and it came up with a few issues so I forgot to remove the material from edge of the pins to accommodate for material thickness which meant my edge pieces joined at a slope and the notches were too wide and it meant that all my connecting pieces wobbled. So after a quick redesign and another quick cutout where I cut the right number out this time, uh, there is prototype number two. And this seemed to work fine. Uh, it went together all right, it didn't wobble, didn't have any slop in it, and passed the shake test. And so after a little bit of mass production, I have started to stick them all together. So I'm sticking the sides and the middle dividers to the the side that has the pivots to it. I'm not sticking the top plate because that needs to come off later to get the cables in. So you start by putting the sides onto the pivot at the pivot point and then you can put the next set on and work along that way. Um, as I'm doing it, I'm super gluing along the join at the bottom on the base plate and also putting a little bit of lubricant on the little wooden pivots just so there's a less likely chance that they will break off. So I constructed these in sets of five uh, just so that they didn't take up all of my desk space when working and also so that I didn't have all the weight of the previous ones I'd made on the current one I was making when all the joints were still a little bit flexible. So, having made the first set of five, I then progressed to make the second, the third, and the fourth. It is now time to start joining them together, and the way I'd laid them out is I should be able to simply push each segment into the next one, and then just glue those joints with a little bit of super glue. Now it's all together, this is the first time I got to see how the joints and movement flexibility would be over the whole length of the drag chain and it turned out to be pretty good. Okay, so this is the one of the the original, I suppose the original drag chain for the first half of the system and it's three little pieces of wood that are cut out on the CNC or each segment is and then there's a strip of canvas that runs along the inside edge there to help act as the hinge and then everything is just cable tied together and then it comes over here and then the cables come out here and they just cable tied it at this point here for now so let's make the bracket fit here we're gonna have to notch it out because of this bracket can you see yeah there's a line here and we're gonna notch it out on the bandsaw which has got a nice coarse blade on so it should remove quite a lot of material with lots of little cuts This is going to get attached to that bracket we just screwed on and then we're going to have some nuts over these holes as spacers so that once this is attached we can then slot this on. Okay, 
Okay, so this should allow us to slot this on like this. Okay, so the next stage is to get these little pieces of cloth in here. These are going to act as just a bit of reinforcement. So we need to take out all of the tops, which is why we didn't glue them. And that way we can get the cables and the piece of cloth in. So we've got this canvas material, it's not stretchy, not really. And we're going to lay that in here with a bit of contact adhesive in there as well. Right, so we've got to go in. It's nothing. Right. Sounds like you need about six pairs of hands to do this. The reason you start at this end is you need these to bend down to get this piece of wood in. So now I've got the cables fully encased within the drag chain, I just need to attach each end. So this end of the drag chain simply just slots onto the bracket that we put on earlier. So because of this large radius that the cable is making the drag chain do, it means that I need an extra four segments for it to be able to reach the other end of where it's going to attach. So while we wait for those other pieces to print out, we're going to attach a block of wood to mount the other end of the drag chain to on the x-axis carriage. And now they've printed out, we have to attach them. And unfortunately, because I've fitted all the other tops, it makes it really awkward to put the, the cables in this time. Okay, so this stuff is useful for everything. It's really handy. So we're gonna use some of this to attach this up here like this. In this case, we're gonna screw from the back. So you can see now the cable's up here rather than down here. And hopefully this doesn't break when I start moving. So we've got more or less full extent that way. And then This goes there. Up and 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 up. And hopefully nothing breaks. I mean, I don't use the ex full extent, like r full right to left on this. So normally I do smaller things. So, it's all going to loosen up a bit with time, but that's pretty good. So if you like the video and you think it's worth a subscribe, then please do that. And don't forget there's the, the free things down in the description below. And I will see you all next week.